Hey guys, making a short video to uh, sort of go over some examples of some CPCU 540, I guess, tips and tricks with the calculator. Um, I was trying to find uh, a similar YouTube video when I was studying for the thing and I couldn't. Um, so that's why I'm making this. I'm going to go over three different, I guess, functions of this calculator that I found helpful on the exam. This is the BA2 Plus Professional Edition. It's comparable to the BA2 Plus uh, there's really no difference. Um, there might be some different functions that we're not going to necessarily use. Um, and the, the buttons are, I guess, a little more tactile. But um, this is the calculator I used because I had it from school. The BA2 Plus would certainly be good enough. Um, the three functions that I'm going to go over would be this iConv. So that's going to be for converting nominal interest rates to effective interest rates. This time value of money portion. And then finally, the CF, which would be cash flow button. So I think it's best just to probably hop into some examples, show you how these work, and then uh, go from there. Okay, so this is going to be the first example that we'll go over. If you see a question like this on the exam, be super excited because it's going to be uh, relatively easy once I show you how to do this. So question reads, ABC Bank is offering you a savings account that pays 2% interest, which compounds monthly. What is the effective annual rate for the savings account? So what we're going to do is hop into our icon fun function. Um, so to do that, we hit the second key and then the number two, so then we're gonna be using that icon feature. Um, so nom is gonna be the rate that typically that you see in the question. So in this case, it's gonna be two. And then, so we enter two and hit enter. Um, that triangle means that it's now stored into that, I guess, function of the, of the calculator. So now we have the two in the nominal. We'll come back to effective. That's what we're gonna calculate for. And then the CY, so it's compounding periods over the year. In this case, we're gonna have uh, monthly compounding. So that's 12 times a year, right? You hit down again, we're gonna be back to the nominal. So this, fun, this, this feature only has three different inputs. If we compute 2.018, so that's gonna be our answer. Effective annual rate would be 2.018. Now let's say that the compounding periods, it uh, it compounded less frequently. Let's say it did uh, quarterly every year. If we do that and we compute for the effective just out of your heads, what do you think this is going to do? should go down, which it does, because less compounding periods, uh, the less the effective annual interest rate. So that is the icon conv feature, um, which is down there. I'm not really going to go over many or more examples of that because they're super simple. Okay, so here we sort of have an introduction to the um, the uh, the time value of money features on the on the calculator here. I'll just go over them before we hop into the example. So n that's going to be your duration or time. Uh, ten years, you put ten in there. I over y that's going to be your interest rate. PV is going to be your present value. PMT is going to be your payment if you have a sort of recurring payment over the years. And then FV is going to be your future value. So we'll hop into this example. Uh, let me clear this out of here because that's from the prior. Nate has purchased an ETF with a $10,000 inheritance he recently received. The ETF is expected to earn a compound interest rate of 5% compounded annually. At the end of 10 years, his investment in the EFT will be worth... So uh, what I like to do on these is basically write down what I know or what I'm given. So this 10,000, I know that that is going to be my present value because that's what I'm investing today, right? Um, going on here, compound interest rate of 5% compounded annually. So we know we're, we're compounding at 5% and my pen's dying. That's pretty good. And that's going to be my interest. I have to grab a new pen. Um, so we have 10,000 today. And we're going to accumulate at 5% and then 10 years. So that's going to be our duration. Okay. So what we do is we just enter this all into, let me grab a different pen here. We'll just enter this all into the calculator, into the time value of money sheet, and we'll spit out what our future value is going to be. So what we have is 10 and that's going to be N because that's the time or duration. The interest rate is going to be 5%. We have five, so I just hit five and then hit the IY key and then it's stored in there because that triangle's there again. The future value, now it's 10,000, but we make that a negative because it's a negative cash flow out of our pocket. We're essentially paying 10 grand right now for a, a future value. I always just double check that zero is in the payment key and I'll show you an example of what, when that comes into play. And then the final would be our future value, which is what we're computing. So what we do is hit compute the CPT 
and then future value. So this is gonna be the future value of a $10,000 investment at 5% for over 10 years. So $16,288 is what our expected future value is gonna be. Another way that you can compute this is just to use the, the compound interest formula. Let's see if this pen's gonna work. Um, so 10,000 times, and if you remember compound interest would be equals to uh, the value that you deposited plus one plus the interest rate over the time. So if we had 10,000 times 1.05 over 10, or uh, to the 10th power, and we can just do this quick here, 1.05, and this is sort of a check that you wanna do if you're in the middle of your exam, just to double check things. So I did 1.05 to the 10th times 10,000. Oh, <laughs> I divided there. The playing wrong. All right, there we go, 16,288, which is my, if we recall, a future value, the same number. And how I did that, there's just this RCL button. It recalls a, uh, the, one of the numbers that you have in the function there. So that's an easy time value money example. Okay, so a lot of words here. Luke won, uh, Luke just won $5,000 from a scratch off lottery ticket. Oh, that's awesome. He wants to have some fun with the money, of course, but also keep some aside for a down payment on a house in a couple of years. Very savvy. Uh, Luke wants to have a $5,000 down payment in five years, so basically comparable to that guy, and decides to invest in a, to invest a portion of his lottery winnings in an investment earning 7% compounded annually. How much must Luke invest today to make sure he has his $5,000 down payment at the end of five years? So uh, just like we did before, let's go over some of the numbers. This 5,000, disregard that, because that's just telling us sort of what he has available. Um, let's see, what's, uh, so he wants to have a $5,000 down payment in five years. Um, okay, so the first number is going to be 5,000. That is going to be our future value, right? Because that's a that's a portion of money. It's not what we have today. It's what we have five years from now. So five is going to be our N or years. It's hard to, oh boy, it's hard to write around a uh, tripod. Um, where our investment is going to earn 7%. Let me just put that I like that earning 7% compounded annually. How much must Luke invest today? So what this is, is essentially it's a present value calculation. So if we put 5,000 into our future value, because that's what we want at the end of five years, and five is gonna be our N, so the number of years is five. Our interest rate, remember, is 7%. So we enter that in. Um, zero on the payments, because again, that doesn't, it's not a feature of this question. And then all we have to do is compute the present value which is gonna be, and you'll see a minus 3564. Um, so that's our number. And if you just wanted to double check, just like we did with the other one where we uh, multiplied this by the compounding interest of uh, 1.07 to the fifth, this will come out to um, oh, seven. Five thousand even, it's a negative, but it, that's fine. Um, don't, don't worry about this symbolage necessarily on this time value. So there's that example. Okay, and another example using this time value of money feature. Um, I'm just gonna show you one thing. So if we hit second, and then above the future value key, you'll see that clear TVM. It should wipe out all the all the, uh, all the the inputs you have here. So if you wanna do that every time, it's fine. Usually it does a good job of overwriting the things as you enter them. So on this one, $15,000 investment is expected to mature in 10 years. To, uh, to a, a future value of 25,450. If the interest rate is fixed, what is our annual rate of return? So in this one, we're just by the language, we know we're gonna try and find the interest. Um, so uh, we know 15,000, that's gonna be our present value, because that's what we're investing today. 10, I'm just looking at the numbers again. 10 is gonna be our years, which is gonna be N on the calculator. And then we're gonna to accumulate to 25,450. And that's gonna be our future value. So in this case, we don't know what our interest rate is, which is easy enough to calculate. 10 is gonna be N, because that's our, our duration. Um, I, we don't know, we don't know the interest rate. The present value is gonna be, fifth, oh, I got a four in there. 15,000, and that's a negative value because that's money we invest today. <clears throat> Payment's gonna to be zero again. And then our accumulated value or our future value is going to be 25,450, 
which I'll put in the future value. Um, the thing that you have to do, if you if you don't have a sign for the present value is negative and then the, the future value is positive, it's going to give you an error. So one of those has to be negative. So that's why the future value is a minus 15,000 and or the present value is minus 15 and the future value is a positive number there. So uh, we have all of our numbers in 10 present value, future value. All we have to do is hit compute interest and then we have 5.42. Um, if you wanted to, you could also just plug this in the compound interest formula, and then uh, you'll, if we, if multiplying the 15 by that to the 10th uh, will bring you out to 25,450. Okay, so this is a good example of a sort of a more complicated one because those other ones are pretty easy. Um, Nicole just borrowed 15000 for a student loan on August 1st of 2013. She expects to graduate four years later, good job, on August 1st of 2017. Her interest rate is 4% compounding quarterly. If her interest begins to accrue immediately and she does not make any payments until graduation, what will the value of the loan balance be on her graduation date? So um, in here, there's really two things I wanted to show you. Um, the first would be whenever you see this language, interest accruing immediately as it would be with a student loan, you what you have to do is change your uh, your your interest compounding from being at the end of the year to being at the beginning because remember the way compound interest works um, if it's if it's at the beginning of the year it's going to accumulate to a, a larger value um, so if we to do to change the way the calculator is working right now you have to hit second and if I could get it to focus it's going to be right above the payment key you see that BGN so I'm, if I'm hitting second as it's on there and payments, so I'm in beginning. So what this is, interest is accruing at the end of the term. That's not what this what this question is saying. It's saying it's beginning right now. So what you do is hit second, and then enter. So now it's at BGN. That's second. That that's the beginning of the term. Now our now our interest is accruing. And so basically, it's just second, and then you're hitting that set button there. Um, so once it's out, or once that's in, it's uh, it actually. Uh, figures it out. So the other way that you can tell this isn't begin mode, there's that BGN up in the top right corner. Man, phone uh, cameras having a fun time with that. Um, so BGN, we're in beginning. The other thing we have to worry about: interest rate is four percent compounding quarterly. Well, the other examples we were looking at, those were all annual compound interest rates. So to get this to calculator to realize that, we go to second, and then right above IY, it's just this periods over the year. Leave that as one. But we have this compound or uh, compounding, I guess, uh, times per year. So if we do this quarterly, that's going to be four times a year. Enter. Okay. Now we're set up. Um, so uh, just like before, we have fifteen thousand. That's going to be what we have today. That's the present value. Four uh, percent compounding quarterly. And you just do it like that. And uh, we know that we're in begin mode because the interest is immediate and we're not making any payments. So what's the future value of this guy? So we know, oh, and we know four years is gonna be in. I cannot spell today. Um, okay, so we got four N and we know we're compounding at 4% interest. And remember we had, we made these changes to make it begin mode and then uh, the compounding feature to be more frequently than a year. The present value is going to be our 15,000. We can leave that as a positive number because it's actually money that you're getting from the bank. That's how I look at it. Zero payment, compute the future value. So 17,588 is going to be the answer. I'm just going to write that down because what I want to do is show you if we wouldn't have made those changes. So I'm going to, I'm going to change this back to the, the interest at the end of the term. And then change our interest back to compounding only once a year. Now watch what happens to the, the ah, crap, I picked the wrong one. The future value, it's a different number, 17,547. So this might be a stumbling block if you don't realize that you have to change some things around in the, in the function of the time value there. So that's a little bit more complicated example, but if you can sort of dissect it a little bit, it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, one more uh, time value function to, I guess, sort of consider. Uh, we'll go over this question. Mark has decided to make a gift to his newborn grandson of $1,000 at the end of each of the next 18 years, so until he's, a, until he's on his own. Uh, the gifts will be put into a savings account earning 3%. At the end of the 18-year period, what will the value of the account be? Okay, so on this one, remember that payment key that I kept throwing a zero at? That's for a sort of recurring payment. Well, we got a recurring payment here. 
Um, so we know 18 is going to be N. And our interest rate is going to be 3%. And remember, it's just it's it's compounding. If it doesn't say anything about compounding quarterly or anything, just assume it's annual. Um, so we know 18 years, 3% interest, and then we're going to be paying $1,000. That's going to be our payment. So if we start throwing this in here, 18 is going to be N. Uh, 3 is going to be the interest. There's no present value because that's not what we're calculating. We're worried about what the value at the end of the year is going to be or at the end of the, of the duration there, 18 years. So we have a thousand dollar payment and we'll make that a negative because we're Mark and we're paying that out. So that's our payment. And then our future value will be 23,414. So that's the answer there. That's an example of when this payment uh, key comes into play on the time value there. Okay, so no more time value of money uh, examples. I know that's the one I'm really focused on the most, but uh, it seems like in the exam and in the practice exams, those are the questions that came up the most, so that's why I went over them. Um, so this one, remember the, the three features I said was the icon, so conversion, the interest rate conversion, the time value of money, and then this cash flow feature. This is an example of a cash flow uh, question. So Matt just signed a minor league contract with the Brevard County Manatees and is expecting to receive the following salary over the next six years. Uh, and then we have our salaries, and if the discount rate is 3%, the present value of the salary stream is what? All right, so to figure this out, what we're going to do is we're going to hop into CF. It's going to be our cash flow. Um, CF0, what that represents is say, um, say a, a company paid a certain amount today to get the benefit of something in the future. So he's, we paid $100,000 today to potentially save 10,000 a year for the next five years. So 100,000 would come in here. This, we're not paying out anything today. So CF0, cash flow not is gonna be a zero there. And then of course I have these, these uh, already entered in here. Um, so 23,500, so that's our first cash flow. And then if you hit down again, F01, so that's frequency of that first payment. So 23,500 is being paid once. It's not, uh, it's not doubled up. You'll see an example pretty soon. So 20, uh, if we continue, 28,000 is our next cash flow. And that only happens once. So FO2, that's frequency of the second, is only going to be one. We get 35,000 for the next two years there. So year three and four, we're going to get 35,000. And what we do, 35, so that's, uh, that's that third cash flow. But this is going to occur twice. Because we got 35, 35, 37,000, and that's going to be just the one time, and then 40,000, and that's just the one time. So once you have those entered in there, you actually back out and uh, hop over right next to this cash flow button is going to be the net present value button. We click that guy. If the discount rate is 3%, so 3% you just throw in as the interest because that's what I is. So we hit 3 and hit enter, and then the triangle, remember, means you just submitted it. And then, of course, it's already computed. But so, if we uh, you just hit the down arrow and then hit compute, and it's going to show you 177,751. So that's what the the present value of this stream of payments or salary is going to be for Matt. I hope going over those examples was a, an assistance to you or a help to you. Um, I'm going to put a link to one of the, the YouTube videos that I watched. It, was a, a, it seemed like he was a professor. He sort of went over a BA2+, but it helped me jog my memory because I had already seen some of this stuff before. Um, so I'm going to put a link to his videos in there to sort of supplement mine. Mine would be more towards uh, sort of examples or or uh, yeah, good examples of what questions might arise on the CPCU 540 exam. If you have any questions, feel free to comment or send me an email. Um, always willing to help. So hopefully it helps you out. Good luck with the exams. Study hard, and we'll see you later.